Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Our 2012 883 Iron Sports Group here on the lift today. And what we're doing is we are going to put a new front tire on this thing. Really in this video, we're gonna focus on removal and reinstallation of the front wheel on the Sportster. There's a lot of reasons you're gonna to have to take the front wheel on or off your bike, and this is great info to have. So first thing we're gonna do is take the axle nut free. This is a 15 16 wrench. Break that free, spin the nut off of there. Now there's a washer back here, but sometimes it's difficult, so it's not gonna come off yet. When I take a soft face hammer or a dead blow and drive this axle out, the washer will pop out. So you just have to be mindful of that. Also, there'll be a spacer back here that will have to come out too. Next, we're gonna take the brake caliper off. You might be able to get the wheel off without taking the brake caliper off, but we're gonna do it anyways, just a little bit simpler. This takes a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. That's right, I said 12, 10 millimeter metric. Should be able to lift and loosey those suckers right on out of there. Keep these bolts in order, because on some years they're different lengths. On this year, on this 12, they're both the same length. We should be able to grab the caliper and ping, rock it off of there. Now's a good time to check your brake pads. Everything's looking good in there. Set that down off to the side. Now we're over here on the right side of the motorcycle. And the next thing we're gonna do is take this pinch bolt free. This pinch bolt is what holds the axle in place on the right side of the motorcycle. This would be a 9 16 wrench and a 5 16 Allen socket. We'll break that free. In fairness, I already broke this free before the shot. But you don't take it all the way out. You can just loosen it up right there. Now, we can get our dead blow or our soft face mallet because you don't want to hit the end of the axle with anything metal. So, you have a nice soft face mallet. Also, make sure your wheel is up in the air and free to where it turns. We're going to take the dead blow. We're going to hit the axle on the left side with the soft face. First washer falls out. Step that, set that to the side. And from there, you know, once it moves out like an inch or so, if it was put together properly and lubed up, you should be able to support the wheel up with your right hand, grab the axle with your left hand, and pull it all the way out of there. If somebody didn't put some never seize or grease or anything on this, uh, it's going to be seized. In which case, you're probably going to have to get in here with a punch at the end of this and try and drive it out. And you're going to want to be careful not to damage the threads. Good luck. It's not going to be easy. So we'll set that to the side. Now we still have our two spacers in here. So we're going to roll the front tire forward. The idea was to catch the spacers. But there they are. Now we're going to keep these in order along with the washer. And slide them all onto the axle to keep track of all of them. That way we know what order they go in when we put it all back together. Now from here, should be able to just take the tire, hopefully slide up on out of there. But the tire doesn't seem to want to easily clear the fender bolts. So we're going to have to take the fender bolts out of this thing. So from here, we're going to take the fender bolts out. So quarter inch Allen, and a half inch wrench on the back of that. Should be able to spin those fender bolts free. Some years you don't have to take it off, some years you do. Depends on how wide your tire is. Set those down to the side. Actually, I'm going to see if I can get it off of there with just taking one side of the fender bolts off. I can. Winner, winner. However, the front little wheel chalk on my ramp is holding me in place.
now that the wheel chalk on my lift is out of the way, I can roll the front tire right on out of here. And we're ready to go mount and balance this new tire. All right, back here in the garage in Noble Moto Studios. <coughs> Got a tire mount up here on the uh, wheel. So, in order to put it back on here, we're going to throw that wrench on the ground. And we are going to turn the fork straight and roll this wheel back on in there. Whoops, hit the camera. And for starters, we're just going to roll that back in between the fork tubes. Um, and now you can't see anything, so now I'll move the camera shot. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put these spacers back in place. Hopefully you kept track of which one goes where. On this bike, skinny spacer goes on the right side of the motorcycle. Fat spacer goes on the left side of the motorcycle. So we are going to position the fork straight. Then we're going to take the spacers and we're going to, with the wheel slightly rolled forward, I hope you can see that. There we go. That's a much better shot. So we have a spacer on each side of the bearings right now. And then we're going to roll the wheel back in here and it's going to have to roll in perfectly straight. Our forks are going to have to be nice and lined up. And it just barely fits down, it fits in there. So it's like a perfect fit. Uh, if you have any misalignment going on, it's not going to fit. So, that alignment there is very critical. Now, we have our front axle here. Now, our front axle, I put a nice little coat of grease on this. You want to do that, because not only does it help lubricate it as it goes gets put through there, but it also helps keep the moisture out so the bearings won't rust to the axle. We definitely don't want that. Some people use Never Seize, and that's fine. Uh, I just use general purpose grease because it works. All right, so now we're gonna put the axle in. You wanna make sure everything is nice and perfectly lined up. You don't wanna have to force this because if you put any burrs or damage on this, it's not gonna go in, it's gonna bind up on the way through there. It's a very precision fit. So you might have to pick the wheel up a little bit. Keep in mind where all your spacers are. And it should just slide all the way through. Give it a peek around the other side. You might have to wiggle it a little bit to get that alignment. <clears throat> but when you do, there it goes. Slides all the way through there. Now you're gonna slide it all the way in until it stops. And that's good right there. Now, we're gonna move the camera over to the left side of the motorcycle and put the lock nut on there, or the axle nut. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do we're going to put our washer back on there, then we're going to pour a nut on. Now when you put this on, you're going to see one side is tapered and one side is squared off. Make sure you put it on squared off side first. Now with the tapered side, it sticks out. Sometimes that's just for appearances, sometimes that means it has a little bit of a locking ring on there inside the threads. This one's just for appearances, but still. So. On the, left, on the right side of the motorcycle, we're gonna take an Allen wrench and we're gonna stick it through the hole in the axle. That's to help hold it all in place. Now I've got my torque wrench here. It doesn't have a socket on it yet. I've got my ratcheting torque wrench here and a 15 16 socket. And my torque wrench is set to 55 foot pounds as the service manual calls for the torque for the front axle. So we're gonna torque it down until it goes clunk right there there it goes clunk so now we know the axle is torqued to spec from there we can go back over the right side of the motorcycle and tighten down the pinch bolt okay we're over here on the right side of the motorcycle we have tightened down our axle pinch bolt uh, we have a 5 16 allen wrench here i happen to have a t-handle allen wrench then we have a 9 16 socket and we're going to tighten this up this is a ratcheting torque wrench so I just ratchet it until it's tight. And then you're going to torque this to approximately 27 foot pounds. Right there, it clicked. And that's good. Your front wheel is reinstalled. Now, all we have to do is put the fender bolts back on and reattach the brake caliper. So, since we're over here, next thing will be to reinstall the two fender bolts. 
and reinstall the nuts on the back of the fender bolts. I have a ratcheting wrench on here. I'm sure there's torque spec for this, but the fender bolts, just tighten them up. Tighten them up till it all feels like it stops. Make sure it's good and tight, but you don't have to kill it. Oops. Make sure your wrench is on there before you tighten everything up firmly. There we go. Now let's put the brake caliper back on. Next thing we're gonna do is reinstall our brake caliper. Make sure our pads, well now's a good time to check the thickness of your pads, and these are good. Make sure they're in position so the gap of the rotor is in between the two pads. Slide that over top the brake rotor there. Then line up your bolt holes. And uh, on some years, you're gonna have different length bolts. On this 12 Sportster, both bolts are the same length. Now we're just gonna run both these in here until they stop. And then we'll go back and snug them up. Then we'll torque them to spec. All right, so they're on there. And take our 10 millimeter 12 point socket Run these in until they're snug. Snug up the bottom one, snug up the top one. All right, and we're gonna torque these to spec. Service manual calls for 32, 38 foot pounds. Put your 12 point socket on there. Tighten them up till they click. All right, there you have it. Uh, we're ready to go ride. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Give your front brake lever a pump a few times to make sure your pads are reseated. And we are good. Now, you take your bike off the jack and you're ready to go ride. That's all I got.